Morning folks, it's the end of the month, it's the end of April and uh, we're here at Ladyfield Farm on the west coast of Scotland. Moved here from Essex just before, well pretty much in the summer last year. And uh, being the end of the month I thought I'd just give you a quick update on what we've been up to for the month. So I've got some videos coming of in more detail of some of the stuff that we've been doing. But just a quick overview. Um, of how it's been. It's been a it's been a cold month. Lots of frosts. Um, that at least, well over half over half of the nights this month have been frosty. Probably more like three quarters. Uh, as low as minus five, in fact. So that's had a bit of an effect on on one of our main activities here, which has been growing our own food. We're we're practicing the no dig gardening method as championed and pioneered by Charles Dowding and we follow his YouTube channel very uh, very closely and every time there's a new video come up we we, uh, we get as get to it as quick as we can and uh, so much to learn from him and we wouldn't have done any of this stuff without without what we'd learned from from Charles Dowding so I thought I'd just give you a quick look at uh, how things are progressing. So in the, this is our little polytunnel where we do, where everything starts off, starts off life. Um, and it all starts off life on this hotbed, which is basically four pallets. Let's take the cover off. We're covering everything every night in here because they're so susceptible to frost. And uh, although it's under cover in here and we've got the hotbed, it does still get pretty cool. So this is this is basically a four pallets filled with fresh horse manure, and we top it up every every two to three weeks with a couple of new barrelfuls of manure. And it gets up when it's fresh, uh, when it's just been topped up. It in very quickly, sort of in two days, it will get up to sixty degrees, and then over the next sort of two two to three weeks, it slowly falls back down to around 30 when we top it up again. And it may, what it means is this soil or the compost temperature in these trays sitting, just all the, the, the warmth is just permeating up through the slots in the top of this board. And it means that they've got a little probe here uh, in the compost in these trays. And that's the temperature, 18.1 degrees in the compost. It's been up as high as 40 degrees in here when the hotbed's really warm. So it means things like these along the back, these are, are melons and watermelons. It means that you can you can uh, germinate them fairly, fairly simply. Um, cucumbers and courgettes there, they're, they've only been in a few days and already they're coming up, which they wouldn't do without the hotbed. So everything starts here, we've got some beetroot here and these are leeks. These are sweet corn. They've only, they've literally been in. They went in on the 22nd of April, so they've only been in a week, and uh, they're doing great. And the roots underneath are just crazy. So also that need stuff that needs warmth here. We've got uh, chilies and peppers all along the front there, and uh, that's that's a few pots of basil. Up here we've got stuff that doesn't quite need so much protection now. Uh, this is sorrel, little gem lettuce. Most of them were planted out yesterday, but um, we've got a few spares. This is oregano, celery. Now this is some flowers, clary blue denim, and this is landcress. Um, we've got spinach and pea shoots in there, which we've been, which we have been harvesting a little. We've had the first couple of decent picks on the spinach. Marigolds, just pot marigolds, which we're going to plant around. They're just in pots sitting there at the moment. We're going to plant them around the various vegetable beds. And under here, I've, I've probably gone a little bit over the top here. Just 150 tomato plants. <laughs> we're going to obviously going to grow some tomatoes, but we're going to we're going to see if we can't sell a few as well. You know, if we can sell a few tomato plants and help pay for all the seeds that we've bought then that's great. And they're all looking pretty good. There's about six different varieties there. 
and everything started there on that little hotbed it's a great thing to have so that's just that's the small polytunnel then in here we've got the big polytunnel which we are starting to fill up we've got broad beans some of these were put in before <clears throat> before the winter sort of november time some of them went in and overwintered and uh, some have had a hard time they hit some pretty hard frosts minus nines we had in january but they've survived and they're flowering so they're still they're starting to grow uh, a decent amount now i'm going to need to get some stakes in for them this is uh, little gem lettuce they only went in yesterday garlic here there's two different types of garlic there's carcass on white and provence white and they're growing real nice well pleased with them and then along here we've got uh, various rows of bijou lettuce this dark red one and there's uh, lamb's lettuce coriander dill and then just uh, various repeats of the same all the way through here and we're picking all these for salad bags and uh, again we're hoping to sell a few of those Here's some beetroot, which we're also picking the leaves off. The leaves of these beetroot just taste fantastic. So they're going to be part of our salad bags as well. Then we've got a row of spring onions, some more lettuce, a few pea shoots, more spring onions and more spinach. And that spinach was sown in place in the row, whereas the ones in the little polytunnel next door, which are much bigger, were sown in modules and then planted out. So this uh, and then this, these patches through here are going to be tomatoes. This is where we're going to put our tomatoes, and then we'll we'll put strings up to the top of the polytunnel, and that's what they'll grow up. So uh, it's, it's such a lovely feeling coming in here and just picking a few bits and pieces, and it, it tastes unlike anything that you can buy in the shops. So fresh, full of flavour, really nice. And a pleasure to, pleasure, just, just pleasure. The whole process is a pleasure. So now this is our, this is our outdoor beds. Now, in January, none of this was here. None of it. And uh, we started off, there's a video. I'll put a link to it in the screen if I can figure out how to do that. Um, where we, the very first start of this we had carpets down like this we got these carpets we found them on the farm when we first arrived so they're just down killing the grass and the weeds you see you lift that back that's all dying off um, then we cover everything in cardboard the whole process is in that video that we that we made called can you dig it so we don't dig any of this we don't dig any of the garden any of the soil it all gets completely undisturbed and this, this is the results. It's cardboard with cow manure. That's rotted cow manure, not fresh. And then compost on top of that. And so we've got peas here, which we're picking for shoots. And then these uh, onions, which are multi-sown. So there's, there's between six and 10 onions in a clump. And you just pick them and thin them out as you go. Take small ones, let, let the rest grow bigger. Got a row of carrots coming up there. They're growing nice for considering the weather we've had. And then we've got some brassicas in there. They're, they're calabrese. And then we've got here a mixture of more calabrese and, and some cabbage. Again, this row is, this bed here has had some harvests. These uh, larger leaves here are radish. And they've done great. Uh, they're such a quick crop, they, they mature real quick. You see, two nice radish in there. So they'll be, uh, they'll be replaced. They'll be harvested and out within the next few weeks and then we'll replace them probably with the leeks that are growing on the hotbed at the moment and then we've got in between the radish we've got rows of parsnip two different varieties i think one's called musselburgh 
and I can't remember what the other one's called. And then again here, these are more beetroot, these are multi sown as well. So there's uh, averaging about five in a clump. And they'll all grow together and swell together and then we'll we'll twist out the ones we want and leave leave the rest in to grow. They've grown really well. They all they all look didn't look great when we first put them in because of the frost. So we had fleece these fleece covers which I've pulled over at the moment. They were over the top, but if the fleece is touching the leaves, as we've discovered, and it freezes, then they can damage the leaves. So a lot of this looked really damaged and we weren't sure whether we'd blown it, but <clears throat> you can see they're doing great. This bed's full of potatoes. Uh, the first earlies are already poking through, but I'm keeping them covered at night with cardboard. I'm going to heap some more compost up on top of them as well, just to protect them and, from the frost and encourage them to grow a bit taller. So the first earlies are showing, there's a second earlies in that part of the bed, and they're not up yet. And that, that bed over there has got um, some main crop potatoes in. Here we've got more onions, and more carrots. A lovely rows of carrots and a, a rogue daffodil in the middle there. Peas, these ones are not for shoots, these are gonna we're gonna leave these to grow for pods. And then more broad beans here, which are struggling. Struggling with the cold. Oh and a, another rogue daffodil. <laughs> and this bed over here is asparagus. There's 28 asparagus crowns in there. They, I've made a video on creating that bed as well, which I haven't put up yet. I'll do that. And uh, so asparagus is a long-term crop. You can see that's that's growing, but you can't pick any of these for the first. These are year-old crowns that we bought and put in, and you're not supposed to harvest them for, until the third or fourth year. That way, all the goodness from the the the, um, the the stems which grow like that one there, they they grow up and they turn into like a fern, and that obviously does its thing by photosynthesis and puts goodness back into the root. And it needs a couple of three years of that before you can start taking them for harvest. We've got another another delivery of compost coming, hopefully this week. And then we'll take this carpet up, put cardboard down, and create another bed there because we've got a lot of stuff coming out of the little polytunnel that we want to grow, grow on. So there'll be sweet corn and more brassicas. Got Brussels sprouts went in yesterday, sown. And uh, last thing we want is to run out of room. And we've got plenty of space here. And we've got the real benefit of that pond, which is actually fed by a, by a stream up there. So we have no problems with watering. And uh, some of you may have seen a video we made a couple of months ago, which was called That Sinking Feeling. A little story of disaster. <laughs> when uh, the digger that I'd borrowed from a friend down the road sunk in the mud while I was trying to clear the pond and we had to I had to get a little rescue operation underway. And uh, at the end of that video, I walked along here and it was just hideous. It was like a, like a war zone. Um, and I did say that by May, hopefully everything will be, you know, you wouldn't tell we've been here. <laughs> as it turns out, you can tell we've been here, but it's a lot better. I've been flattening it out as it's dried. The grass is just starting to come through and grow up a bit. And the pond, compared to what it was in the stream, is so much, there's so much more now uh, open, clear water. In fact, yesterday I ran, I, I ran down here with a digger because I had to move some sand and ballast. And uh, I just ran along here to flatten some more stuff because I'm digging, I'm digging bits out of the pond and putting it up on the bank, letting it dry and then flattening it out. It's slow but sure, but we're definitely gaining ground here. And uh, something caught my eye just over, just over on the bank there, and uh, looked across, and there was an otter. 
just on the bank. Well, I was just in the water and uh, I just saw his tail come up and as he dived down, the unmistakable shape of an otter. So I don't know uh, how resident it may be. We have got some wildlife footage of otters uh, on our wildlife camera trap. So we knew they were about, but I didn't realize they were uh, up here. So that's uh, another ongoing project is to, to clear this because this was so, so clagged up with, uh, with overgrowth. Is that a word? Overgrowth? Hmm. It is now. So, it's getting better. That patch of ground is getting better. Sheep still munching away. Never stop. <coughs> Obviously the other, the other projects that we've been uh, keenly working on is uh, is the caravan <laughs> off they go um, well this uh, this is another job I've been able to do while the diggers here all this stone that's down the bank here is the remnants of a cottage that was here and that was demolished by the previous owners and we're reclaiming all of that and we're going to use it to eventually it will be the outer skin of our new house. Um, great thing about Argyle is there's plenty of rain so you can pile up a load of rocks like that and uh, it automatically gets washed by the rain. I'm also using that for another little project which I'll show you in a second. The axe lady has been busy, I tell you. Look at that lovely pile of logs in there. Uh, we, we did a little video called The Axe Lady and when Lindsay got stuck into chopping logs and during that video, nobody seemed to notice that I was actually building a log store. <laughs> and uh, this is it. And Lindsay has chopped the majority of that wood and stacked it in there. Something really pleasing about that, I tell you. And this is uh, this is where we're at with the caravan now. Uh, Thirty-seven by twelve foot static caravan. And uh, anyone who's been watching along knows that I've been doing a day a week working at a over at a friend's place in uh, Otter Ferry. Uh, a friend there has got some land and six hectares of spruce trees and some larch that his great-grandfather planted 80 years ago and he's using that to build his own house and I'm helping him do some of those projects and in return I'm getting getting wood so all of this structure has all been built with wood from Otter Ferry and this beautiful larch here it's just gorgeous wood um, the, I'm waiting on some, uh, some more of that to be cut, but I've, uh, I've made a video about the first stage of building this conversion and I'll put a link up for that. And the, the roof is now felted. It's all done with torch on roofing felt. You see the flashes up there. The ladder's not around at the moment, so I can't show you all of that. This is the timber we've now got for, for building the decking. That's just laid in there, keep it out of the rain a little bit for now till we get some treatment on it. And this is the latest project, a little fire pit. I dismantled a washing machine the other day, took the drum out and I've uh, got the base as well, just down there. So uh, it actually spins. <laughs> so having a lot of fun building that. I made a base out of some old breeze blocks that were here. Um, 
up to just below the decking level. See, the decking's going to be sitting on top of that timber there, around, all the way around this. So now this is some of the stone from the old house, and I've yesterday just started building that up. So that stone will come up above the height of that uh, drum. And uh, <laughs> the obligatory rocking chair will come into action. Somebody has suggested I should get a shotgun for above the above the porch to complete the Ladyfield hillbilly look. So that's been a really good fun project. It's taken a while, and as I say in one of the other videos, it's not something to do if you're just going to be in a caravan for one winter. But if you're going to be in it for two or three years like we are, then it's well worth doing because we can now get insulation in behind the larch, between the larch cladding and the <coughs> and the original walls of the caravan. That's going to make a huge difference to keeping the place warm. It's not a problem getting it warm, it's a real problem keeping it warm though. So that's, uh, that's the work we've been on this month. But it's not all been work, we have had some fun as well. Well, to be honest, the work is really good fun. Especially when uh, when we're doing it together. And uh, this coming week, Lindsay's on annual leave for a week, so we're going to get lots done. And, and uh, But we also managed to get out in the canoe. That's my canoe. And Lindsay's kayak is hidden inside <laughs> inside that one. And we managed to get out for uh, for an evening on Loch Orr a couple of weeks ago. And... Uh, I'll leave you with a bit of footage of that trip and and the sunset from that night which was just spectacular. So there's lots more videos coming. There'll be a more detailed video of the second part of the caravan conversion very soon and a video for the fire pit and thanks for following along and it, it makes such a difference knowing that people are enjoying our journey with us so please do subscribe if you haven't yet and please share the videos around if you can that would be really cool and uh, keep building this little community up I can't quite get it onto the rolly bar. Yeah. It'll come to you quickly. You might as well hit the back of your van. It works.
that all right? Yeah? yeah. It's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Crap. Why'd you bring me here? Beautiful bit of uh, natural history photography there. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 